He claims he hasn't had contact with another human being since the uh, mid-1990s when he encountered somebody on a trail and they just exchanged a common greeting and that was about it. So I would be the first human he's spoken to since, again, the mid-1990s. So, and he, like I said, he's very, very intelligent man. Don't have the route I did? No, I didn't say They're actually right mm -hmm. Just had a two tenths of a mile. Let's do it. I followed this subject for 45 minutes right behind him, step for step. Trooper Vance was right behind me. Several occasions I turned around and I pointed out how this suspect took the same steps all the time. If he stepped on a route this morning, he stepped on that same route for the past 20 years. Every step was calculated, every movement, every trail. The way he camouflaged it, again, you saw when we went up there, you were standing 10 or 15 yards from it, unless you're really looking at it. And know what you're looking at, you really couldn't see it. So uh, that, you know, how well that he, I mean, he was very methodical about, one, how he moved around here, how he became, you know, went undetected, and again, how he kept his stuff up there. I mean, you could see a very, very meticulous. So he had his, his uh, thermometer, clothesline, just everything. He you know, set up the way he, like if he was living at home. So, but it's just amazing to me that he could make it through Maine winters like that, living in a nylon tent. Yeah. And I know we're going to find sets of keys. Oh, yeah. He had a food thermometer he must have been worried about. Hmm? He didn't move all winter. He was adamant that he wouldn't leave his campsite in the winter because he didn't want to be tracked back to his location. So I said, well, what did you do all winter? How did you spend your day? He said, I would read books, he said, and I would meditate. 